Today's Dallas Cowboys Report mailbag is presented by Manscaped. Head over to manscaped.com slash chat, and that'll save you 20% off and get you free shipping when you use promo code chat. So go check them out, manscaped.com slash chat. 20% off and free shipping. Let's dive in the mailbag then. First up, a super chat from Exo Ty. Trade for Jeffrey Akuda and Gilmore. Wait, wait, why stop there, right? Uh, fun idea. I genuinely don't think you have the assets to actually pull that one off. Frankly, you probably don't even need both of them because you also have Trevon Diggs, and those are all outside corners. All right, from Rico C., I know we don't need another offensive playmaker, but if the top player on the board is a tight end or offensive lineman, wouldn't it be smart team building to pick them? I argue no. Now, if it's an offensive lineman and you're worried about Tyron or Lael or if it's Penny Sewell, different conversation. But I would argue at that point, there's a good offensive player, maybe even a cornerback on, on the board at that point. I would trade down and acquire more assets and build out my roster that way. Dwayne Jackson, I think he means, do you think the Cowboys will intentionally give Dak a low ball offer? If so... Will they try to paint Dak as greedy and by not giving them a discount? Are the Cowboys really saying it's the Cowboys' way? I mean, they did that last year. So, yes, they will. Now, maybe they'll be like, oh, shoot, that didn't work. We, we won't go that route. But I think that, yes, the, the, the negotiation side from the Cowboys will be to leak it to the Dallas Morning News and say, oh, we made Dak a great offer. He said no. And just like they did last year. So, yes, I think that is a path the, the Cowboys will try to go of leaking it and making it seem like Dak's the bad guy because he didn't want to take less to stick around. From Bass Attack TV, if Sertan and Farley are off the board, instead of trading down, could we draft the next best guy and trade him to a team for a defensive piece? You are adding an unnecessary step. If you're just trying to trade the guy, send him, send the pick for the defensive piece. If you want to trade number 10 overall for a defensive player, I'm down to have that conversation. I don't, it's kind of like though a draft pick is like buying a car. Once you spend the draft pick, once you drive it off the lot, it loses value. The unknown of what the pick could be is what makes it so intriguing. So at that point, trade the pick. Don't take the player and then try to trade it instead. Zachary Marquez, what would be the most realistic rating our defense could be if we spend big money this offseason? Uh, if I'm going to rate it on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the Cowboys run defense in all phases of the game, and 10 being uh, the old Chicago Bears defense from 1985, like a 6, 7 maybe? I mean, hypothetically, you could make the defense awesome if you just got rid of all your offensive pieces. But that's not really a very realistic outcome for this Cowboys show. Now, if you don't want to spend big money and be prepared for Valentine's Day this year, head over to manscaped.com slash chat. 20% off and free shipping when you use that link. You can get the Lawnmower 3.0 because come Valentine's Day, guys, your lady does not want to see a bunch of hair down there. That is not appealing to anybody. Head over to manscaped.com slash chat. You can get the Lawnmower 3.0 and all of their great men's grooming tools for 20% off, and they'll throw in free shipping as well. We'll put that link in the comments and in the description for you guys as well. From Sports World, who is your favorite NFL draft prospect for the Cowboys? Also, love the show. Sub everyone. Everyone be more like Sports World and subscribe to the Dallas Cowboys Report. Uh, from a Cowboys perspective, I like Caleb Farley a lot, the cornerback from Virginia Tech. And then it gets a little bit dicey outside of Patrick Sertan in terms of guys I want at 10. But in the 20 to 45 range, a lot of different players I like quite a bit. All right, so again, I appreciate that question there, uh, Sports World. From Dwayne Jackson, by some miracle, Panay Sewell falls to 10, and Caleb Farley is still on the board. If you were in the Cowboys draft room, which player would you take? That's a great question. Um, if I have full confidence in Tyron Smith 
and Lael Collins staying healthy, give me Caleb Farley. If I don't, and deep down I probably don't, I think I'll take Panay Sewell. Now I got to figure out what I'm going to do on defense, what I'm doing with my tackles, but on my non-need specific draft board, Panay Sewell is going to be higher than Farley, but it's not as big of a need at corner. So ideally, maybe I take care of corner and free agency at least a little bit so I don't have to go corner at number 10. From Alki Trimble, doesn't a Dan Quinn defense need a rangy safety? Yes. Yes, it does. You want someone who can play that cover one, single high, cover three role. You want him covering that middle of the field and being able to get over to the edges as best as possible on top of that. You need a rangy free safety. It is a massive need for this Dallas Cowboys team. From Gold Fox 177, how do the cap hits work? Confused on how if Dax is a long term for 38 million a year, how is the tag for about the same more of a hit? Because when contracts are signed, and this is true for pretty much every single one, let's say it averages 38 million per year, they never actually go 38 million, 38 million, 38 million, 38 million. What they do is backload the contracts because the salary cap always goes up. You'll kick money down the road because you can roll over cap space. So you could take, let's just say, $8 million from that first year, make it a $30 million cap hit, and just throw it on to the next couple years, evenly space it out. For example, when you sign a signing bonus, let's say that's $50 million, you don't get, you, the, the player gets all 50. The cap hit does not take all 50. It gets spread out up to five years of the contract. So the way those deals work is you make it easier in year one and then backload it later on when the cap is higher or even just push it way down there like the Saints and Eagles have done in recent years. Now that's something Stephen Jones has done before. He added a fake year for Tyron Smith, yet wouldn't do it for Dak Prescott. Anyway, what is your confidence level in Stephen Jones, who's the lead guy on all these contract negotiations? Rate this for me on a scale of 1 to 10. How confident are you in Stephen Jones? Let me know what you guys think. From Jordan Simmons, after seeing the, the Stafford trade, Shouldn't the Cowboys do that deal for Dak? N unless you're trying to rebuild, no. That doesn't intrigue me whatsoever. Like, the Rams got Matthew Stafford, gave up a bad contract in Jared Goff, two firsts and a third. Like, I think at minimum you should be able to get two firsts and a third for Dak Prescott. But frankly, I think Jared Goff added more draft picks going back to the Lions in that deal. I don't want to move on from Dak unless you're not going to pay him. If you're not going to pay him, you're being dumb, but you might as well get something back in exchange, right? So I want you guys to answer this question for me. How many first-round picks is Dak Prescott worth? I, I think baseline three, but that's if you're being competent, which the Cowboys haven't been that competent so far. I will make this question the pinned comment on today's video. Let me know how many first-round picks you think Dak is worth. From Alakai Trimble, another super chat. Predict the Will McClay special. Now, I define the Will McClay special as former early round pick who comes in on a pretty cheap deal. I'm going to try to speak this one into existence. I think Malik Hooker makes sense. The, the soon to be former Colt safety as the Will McClay special. From Delunatic, Jeremiah Wusu Koromora, aka Joke, in the first. Then what position in the second and third? You can't pigeonhole yourself in, but you got to be looking corner. You got to be looking safety, probably defensive tackle, and maybe offensive line as well. From Bass Attack TV, what about trading our pick for the Chiefs' Chris Jones? I mean, I'd do it. The Chiefs say no because the Chiefs understand, oh, screw the salary cap, we'll pay guys anyway. I don't think they'd pull that, that deal off. Another Chiefs player here from Evan Hauser. What do you think we would have to give up for a Juan Thornhill trade? Well, he's playing again for Kansas City, so probably not what you would want to give up. Like the Chiefs would, I don't think KC would do it for a second. So at that point, it just kind of becomes a, a, a non-starter. Like, he's super cheap. I love him. It should have taken him. Anyway, I'm not going to do on it. I'm, I'm not going to be negative, okay? From Dwayne Jackson, with the shelf life of an NFL player becoming short, Will NFL contracts uh, 
not guaranteed become not guaranteed except signing bonuses like the NBA. Oh, why are NFL contracts not guaranteed? Uh, because the NFL owners won. <laughs> like, that's why. The, the NFL CBA has always uh pretty heavily favored the 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 NFL owners in the end. So they won in the end because there are a lot more players. And you don't have to appeal to the top end of guys. You appeal to the rank and file. And the rank and file doesn't care about contracts not being guaranteed because that's not how they're going to make their money in the long run. From Simon, what is Marcus May's value? And what do you think he's going to make per year? I don't think he becomes the highest paid safety in the, on the open market, but he's going to be near it. He's probably going to approach that $15 million per year threshold. Maybe it's 14 14 and a half, he's going to get a lot of money. So, and it, frankly, I think the Jets are going to be like, yes, we'll pay you because you're one of like three good defenders we have. Why would we let you walk for a future third round comp pick? I think the Jets end up paying him. I think they pay him a pretty good amount of money. Now, if you guys haven't already, hit that big red button and subscribe. That way you guys don't miss out on anything we do here at the Dallas Cowboys Party. If you want to be part of these live mailbags, well, then you got to be subscribed. Other ways, you're just going to miss out. YouTube.com slash Cowboys TV. And if you're watching on YouTube, let's hit that big red button already and join us. From Bucky, how would you feel about Jordan Lewis to free safety next to Wilson and draft another corner opposite Diggs? I wanted the Cowboys to give Jordan Lewis some safety reps because I wanted to see how he would fare. But I haven't really seen Jordan Lewis play safety. It's like maybe a dozen to a half dozen total snaps. So I can't assume that Jordan Lewis is going to be a great free safety. I can bring him back and allow him to compete, but I got to find more options too. From Zachary Marquez, what would you value players in the draft from Alabama? You should never, ever just say, well, this player went to this school, therefore he's good or therefore he's bad. Because if you do that, you end up saying, oh, I don't want Patrick Mahomes. Texas Tech has never had a good quarterback. Or I don't want Aaron Rodgers. Kyle's never had a good He's Kyle Bowler. Alabama players, like, I like them because they're good football players. Doesn't mean they always hit. There are plenty of busts in there. So in the end, it's not about the school or the logo on the helmet. It's about what the player can actually do.